Hi, everybody. My name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just sitting here waiting to waiting to, to, to talk about, and I know somewhere along the line it's going to be about love, it's going to be about truth, it's going to be about oneness, because that's why we come together in this studio at this time, all of us. I mean, you know, people who've watched the show before know that, you know, we've done many, many shows over the years, M must be going on, you know, 17 years that we've been doing bridging shows, and this particular one is in the t high 280s. And everybody on this crew is a volunteer, and everybody is so dedicated to, to working and playing and making things so perfect in, in that sense and so uh, precise about bringing that vibration of truth and love and oneness and, and God and the inclusiveness of, of our experiences and the infiniteness of our experiences and making this available all over the world. And now with the availability of the internet and through uh, satellites, I mean, this, this bridging show that we're taping now within you know, two or three months at the most will be available all over the world. Literally anybody in almost every country with an internet connection, uh, with a TV, will be able to see this show. And, and what, why are we coming together? Why are we taking the time and energy to, to make that availability happen? And it's because it's our time to experience the love. It's our time to feel the love and share it. And this is this bridging platform, this bridging uh, shows and art projects and all the different aspects of it, we feel here the crew and I, is a gift to us, a blessing to us, to be able to participate in such a beautiful way, in such a powerful way using the internet and using uh, satellites and TVs and to get that message of unconditional love, to get that, more important in a way, to get the vibration of unconditional love and make it available all over the world. And each of us individually and, and probably all of us collectively on some level recognize that you know part of our service and part of our destiny here and why we are here is to be part of the building of new paradigms part of the building of of new ways of interacting with each other in in every way that the old paradigms the old ways of being the old uh, techniques of, of interaction are not really working. And the reason they're not really working is they're not based on love. They're not based on that experience of connection. They're based on separation, they're based on greed, they're based on fear. And they result in institutions and paradigms that aren't really of service to the whole. And so we're here to, to bring about these new paradigms. We're here to heal the heart and as we heal the heart those new paradigms are going to come in and they are going to come in in ways that are non-linear they're going to come in in ways that you wouldn't predict but they are coming in and we're fortunate to be part of that and we're super fortunate to have tonight's guest with us who's literally a pioneer in building new paradigms and in seeing things in different ways of of operating outside the box and bringing that just expanding all our consciousness. Uh, Elliot Maynard is a, an incredible artist. He's a futurist, he's a luminary, and he's best described as a neo-Renaissance leader. He's an expert in zoology, ocean, oceanography, <laughs> coral reef ecology, rainforest biology. I mean, he's, he's very eclectic, very skilled, and very dedicated to healing the heart and building the, those new paradigms. He's the author of two extraordinary books that I know about. One is Future Science Art, where he has, uh, you know, gallery-like pictures of literally a hundred pieces of whimsical, eclectic, beautiful, powerful art made from materials from all over the planet. And he's also the author of Transforming the Global uh, Biosphere, which is 12 fu futuristic strategies for building these new paradigms. So 
to have Elliot here and to share his gifts and skills and unrelenting hunger to know that truth and to share it and to build those new paradigms is really an opportunity for us. As most of you know, we usually show two music, art, music, straight music videos and music art videos. Well, tonight we're showing uh, two parts of uh, Mirabai Seba. They're an extraordinary uh, musical combination that does just powerful, inspiring music. And they put together these beautiful videos and we're gonna show uh, two parts of that. And we also have uh, a piece of art that, that Elliot has done with his, uh, his wife and beloved, Alyssa uh, Farina uh, Maynard. A uh, beautiful piece of sculpture, one of those whimsical, powerful pieces. So that'll be with us. And we have another piece of art from Joy Herhold uh, from Prescott, Arizona. And these pieces of art have uh, been manifested to be part of the International Healing Art Project. We came as a vision, it came as a dream, as a, again, an acupuncture, a healing the heart of the planet, a healing of the planet by having all these incredible people all over the world just manifest energetically, and however they create and however they manifest, energetically it would be like acupuncture as they produce a new original piece based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth. And we've had literally over 350 pieces already manifested and probably another 500 pieces of people, or not pieces manifested, but people who have committed to doing a piece and you know they're just, it hasn't quite manifested through them yet. So anybody, and it's made for anybody, any format, any style, any size. Uh, we've had sculptures and collages and glass and jewelry and um, acrylics and, and giant hands. And, and if you want to be literally blown away, go to heaventoearthart.com, heaven, T-O, earth, A-R-T.com. Go page after page of this incredible art from all over the world. Everyone is welcome. We've had people from two to 93. And just go there and see the power of that art, see the power of that healing. And the more people involved, the better the healing. So please join us. So, you know, again, it's an opportunity to come together, to feel love, to share it, to learn about new paradigms, to learn about new ways of being, to learn about literally the power of love. So join me in a short meditation, then we'll have the first part of the Mirabai Seba video. <clears throat> Thank you. So as I said, we're going to show this beautiful, beautiful, amazing music video from Mirabai Seba in two parts. It's called Awakened Earth. And we want to especially thank uh, Mukande and Mirabai Seba and Guru Ganesh and Spirit Voyage Music for making this beautiful, beautiful video available. Mirabai Seba, enjoy.
Hi, everybody. Welcome back. So you'll see in the other part of the Mirabai Seva uh, Awakened Earth a little later on. Beautiful, so beautiful. And the extraordinary heart you're seeing in between Elliot and I is it's not this particular heart, but the same person who does it is uh, Carol Ostroff. She's a healer and a psychic and a, just an amazing being who has done this uh, incredible flower energetic healing heart for us for every show since 1995 and every show she refreshes it brings different energies gets guidance about what kind of energy to put into it and we're, we're just again so honored to have this heart as part of the the bridging process and as part of the bridging experience when people come in they just get so blown away it's usually we set it in the center of the the set like it is now and on a lot of shows, we show art so it doesn't get shown up. But on this show, Elliot and his beloved uh, Alyssa have done this incredible art that I'm going to pick up in a moment. And so we decided to have this heart there. So thank you, Carol, for doing this for so many years, so beautifully and so powerfully. So, Elliot, welcome. Thank you, Alan. All right. So now this extraordinary piece of art. Why don't you talk a little about that and the art project and, you know, just your play work and all that. This is an example of a new paradigm called Future Science Art. And the whole idea of this was maybe 30 years ago, I asked for artistic inspiration from other dimensions, other realms, other uh, places in the universe. And I started working, and working with found metal, I taught myself to do welding and brazing. I also have a plasma torch, which will cut through six inches of steel, and that creates some interesting effects. This particular piece illustrates the bridging of heaven and earth between the physical realm, which is the red, and then you'll notice a, a slightly bluish greenish color here which is the spiritual body and then moving up in vibrational level into the higher dimension which is the crystal the purity and this provides a an example of enlightenment so to speak now the other aspect of enlightenment is that for enlightenment to occur it's been my experience that Enlightenment occurs not simply to individuals, but as a flow of energy out to the world, out to people who are participating together in a show like this. Alan mentioned the portal. And what he's perhaps referring to is an interdimensional portal. And this is the manifestation of the kind of energy that comes through. So these are actually living sculptures. They're made from the heart. They're made through the heart of the artist and using the hands of the artist. And my objective was originally to create a new kind of living art form and to make a critical mass of over 100 sculptures and art pieces. And over the last 25 years or so, I've done exactly this. Um, and this is really about the first piece to go, go, go out, although there, there are several celebrities that have had smaller art forms sculptures gifted to them. Uh, one in particular in Malibu, who I won't mention by name, has one beside his bed, and he's a world famous rock star. So, the other aspect of this is what I call a Pinocchio effect. You may remember the story of Pinocchio, who was a puppet. Um, his maker was Geppetto. Geppetto and his wife had a clock shop, and he also made puppets. But they always wanted a child. They couldn't have a child, so they had this puppet. And he called him his son. And throughout the story, this puppet, Pinocchio, goes through uh, some different adventures, but ultimately he wishes upon a star to become a real boy. And Geppetto did too. So the, here you have your living art forms. 
Interestingly, what Alan said about the, the art forms manifesting, the art pieces manifesting, they actually have an embedded consciousness of their own, which it's embedded, it's higher consciousness being brought into the physical manifestation. You become, we all as artists become techno shaman in this respect. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. That was some, <laughs> so <some> opening. <laughs> That's great. So, how did you start in your life to, to you know, come into knowing what your destiny was and knowing that in, in your service was going to be to build these new paradigms? How did that kind of evolve for you? Well, uh, in the 1960s, I was. I spent 12 years in uh, higher education, going through various disciplines, and I essentially learned in spite of the system, as well as from the system, and the in spite of the system part was the itch of adventure, the itch, itch of going, pushing the envelope, going through new barriers, and uh, after a point, after you do you go out to very, very remote islands and places in the jungle and, and under the ocean and, and photograph um, what's left. Well, you can go to, oh, into space, but this is a way to be interdimensional. And what I like to tell people who want to, everyone can do this. Anyone can do this. And this is the gift that has been given through uh, this new paradigm. And I like to tell people that we've been taught in school or, or by our parents not to believe anything that we can't prove to be true. If we simply make a little reversal, like a switch, in our mind and say, don't disbelieve anything you can't prove to be untrue, suddenly you can become a techno shaman. And art becomes embedded with consciousness. And interestingly, uh, quite independently, uh, there have been three or four psychics who have been in the vicinity of these sculptures and seen them kind of flipping back and forth interdimensionally, lights flashing, wheels turning, whatever. So if, perhaps those of you that are sensitive will see something going on like this. And that, that was something I never intended. And to get back to the critical mass of 100, we're talking about the, the, the critical mass to tip the balance so this, this becomes something for everyone in the human race. This is ascension, essentially. And actually, that's the name of the piece we forgot to mention. <laughs> yeah. It's Ascension <laughs> One. Right? Ascension One. Right. So, how do you see you know, at the opening I talked about, you know, the paradigms that we're living in that we don't really serve, that are based on fear and separation. How do you see us evolving, you know, as, as individually and as a species into that experience of building paradigms? You know, we call it like on the bridge between heaven and earth. The part of it is building all these new paradigms to serve the needs of the human race with with paradigms and institutions based on love and connection and oneness? Well, I've always been about bridging, and when we moved to Sedona originally about 35 years ago, we looked over this beautiful formation called Cathedral Rock and saw a triple rainbow. So we named our nonprofit foundation Arcos Cielos, which essentially depicts a bridge in the heavens. This is a bridge between science and art, art and education, uh, ancient and modern technologies, um, t t uh, medical technologies as we know it in shamanistic healing, uh, all these things. So, so the bridge between heaven and earth is, 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 we have this in common, we have a resonance here. And when we bring these two fields, our two fields of dreams together, and both of us are walking the dream, we're, we're being the dream, becoming the dream, and this is, this is a, simply, a simple explanation of ascension in itself. 
we're doing it, we're here. And the portal you speak of is a portal out to the world through the global, um, the gro I call it the, the global mind field or the global brain, uh, all the satellites and, and communications technology hooked in. So it's quite exciting. Yeah, it has tremendous potential. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so, uh, you, know, we've, you know, we've done a lot of shows and we've talked about the hundredth monkey a lot. Mm -hmm. And someone like you, why don't you give your experience of it, your explanation of it? This is about, I would estimate this is about the 120th monkey. So I would say that we're over the hump as far as critical mass goes. What better time to light off a, a new paradigm uh, of transformation and catalytic action where anyone can become a change master than Easter weekend. <laughs> so, <laughs> for people who, you know, are seeing this and listening and, and feeling your passion and your commitment to, to feel love and share it, to be, you know, this, in a sense, a new human, how, and, and they want to say, well, I have my wife, my family, my job, how, how do I go from there to here? How do I get from here to there? <laughs> oh, there to okay. Here. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. That's a good question. Um, the beauty of this is, despite the fact that we have all these negative um, overlays that we need to overcome, these are centuries and thousands of years old, actually millennia old, we, during these times, have the capability to break through. Now, the good part of it is, the grounded part of it is, it's really addicting. Once you get, if you want to have an addiction, you might as well be addicted to uh, enlightenment or ascension or happiness, whatever you want to call it. It's all rolled up into one. These are our children. And uh, books can be book children. Ideas and dreams can be manifested. They happen, it happens fast now because of the way the energy is. And this is exactly what you said previously. So you would just encourage people to, in a sense, be open to it, be open to their intuition, be open to their visions. I mean, I'm just trying to put myself in a position of somebody who has a lot of habit pattern, a lot of, you know, concepts of right and wrong, but they have a sense that what you're saying is talking to them. What a sense of this show and, you know, the opening and oneness and, you know, there's something awakening in them. H how, how would you suggest they fan the flame, except watching the show 50 times in a row, or something like that, or, or doing a piece for the art project, or, you know, I mean, being part of that collaboration. How would you encourage them, advise them, uh, enliven them? You need to find something you really, really love. And then begin to watch your own behavior. Because one of the keys, again, very grounded in educational terms, is learning how to learn. Ob observe yourself learning. And then you can keep evolving the learning process. And what we're really talking about here is revolution, but re-evolution. We're creating a new evolutionary revolution. That's what we're doing. And it's very exciting. Uh, this will break out. When this, if you can kind of encourage this, this kind of evolutionary fire with your, in your own being, in your heart, in something you really, really love to do, you begin to feel in the zone. This is true if you're doing camera work, uh, if you're doing interviews, if you're doing art, if you're doing business. And when you can begin to watch yourself very carefully, you begin to find yourself in a zone. And as basketball players and football players sometimes talk about it, this zone is interfacing with the quantum field. And if I can use another analogy, uh, using the left brain, uh, the more educated, linear kind of 
uh, way of thinking, you need to go, everything is cumulative, like the numbers one through a thousand. And so if you want to go back to number 20, you have to rewind to tape that far. When you work in the quantum field, it's like working with a CD. You, you compartmentalize chunks of information. And even though you think, God, I don't know if I can remember this, all of a sudden when you want it, it's right there. It comes down from here or here or here. It's not linear. It's, it's quantum. And boom, it appears. And if you, the more you work in the quantum field and observe your own your behavior and your feelings. This is the addiction I spoke about. It's an addiction to uh, happiness, to joy, to... Spontaneity. Spontaneity and creativity. And, and that, that is what heals. It'll heal the earth. It'll heal our spirits. It'll heal our dysfunctional lives that we all enjoy and, and also not enjoy. And... Um, it's wonderful. It's yeah, a new we journey. talk about it as healing the root or healing the heart, and you, yes, and that'll heal all the leaves. Yes, as long as the root is toxic, you could have no matter how much you work at it, you can have sick leaves. Where, wherever there's a problem, there's I'm 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 an incurable optimist in saying that there is always some kind of a solution. I mean, we're in dire dire trouble as far as the global situation goes. On one hand, if you get mental about it. But those of us who are sensitive and can see uh, the bigger picture know that we're going to get muddled through this somehow. And it'll be the forces of creativity and love that you've talked about. And the force of resonance of groups coming together. Just being together in a field yeah, right. and creating a little resonant field. And uh, that's very powerful. Very and then powerful. if you multiply that out through the global internet and communication system, wow, that's a powerful tool. And I like to talk about um, creating situations, not only win-win situations, but win to the third power, win-win-win. And then if you move into the quantum realm, it becomes win to the X power. Think about it. Exponential. I will think about it, and we'll get back to it in the second section so everybody can think about it while they watch the second half of Awakened Earth, Mirabai Seva. Again, Mukande, Mirabai Seva, Guru Ganesha, Spirit Voyage. Thank you for making this available. Awakened Earth, Mirabai Seva. Enjoy.
Hi everybody, welcome back. So Mirabai Saver, Awaken Earth, pretty beautiful. And the unbelievable piece of art you're seeing in between uh, Elliot and I is by Joy Herhold, Unity of Love and Power. Joy is an unbelievable artist and she's done five different pieces for the art project. So powerful, so beautiful, so magical. Go to Heaven to Earth Art and look up Joy Herhold. It's on the first name, so Joy. So this is an oil on canvas board. Uh, Joy is from Prescott, Arizona, USA. Her website is http, you know, colon, backslash, backslash, a-joy.net, a-joy.net. And this is what Joy says about unity of love and power. This art is driven by a great desire to contribute to a healthy, fun, and dynamic world. Unity of Love and Power explores whimsical and deep messages. It is an original that shares creative energy with the viewers. So, Joy. So, we'll show other of Joy's pieces we have shown already. And she's amazing. Go to the website. Anybody who wants to be part of the Healing Art Project, please join us. The more people involved, the better. The better the healing. So, Elliot. So, you did this unbelievable book. I mean, I was really, when I first saw it, I was like, wow, this is very cool, very whimsical, very far out. Why don't you talk about how art and healing art can really have that vibrational, and people don't, at this point, don't recognize the value of it, or else they'd have it all over their houses, rather than be willing to pay $108 million for a Picasso that might not have that kind of energy. Well, first of all, I believe that the great artists of the past uh, channeled the higher forces and the higher energies. They did this through their own filters of the icons of the church, perhaps. Uh, but people like Leonardo and Leonardo da Vinci and that group, some of them were probably doing this perhaps on the edge of consciously. Because the vibrations have gotten so speeded up now, the energy, however you want to put it, uh, it's possible to be conscious of this creative flow, this creative energy now, all the time that you're working. And so this is really one of the simple, basic keys to ascension. And putting together these art forms, the artist uh, use, consciously uses the fire of the acetylene torch, uh, the electricity, of the uh, wire feed welder, the TIG MIG welder, and also, of course, oxygen is used. And then it, it, you can use the water if you take the hot pieces and drop them in a bucket of water, so you're, you're using fire, air, and water. And these are created from sometimes historical coordinates. Um, I have gone to very remote areas of the, of the Gulf of Cortez in Mexico and to uninhabited islands and found certain bones of, shoulder bones of sea lions and very unusual stones and perhaps um, antique iron from, from sites where ancient uh, factories were located. And putting these together, what's created in the final analysis is a symphony of vibrational coordinates. It's as if you have a little choir together. Now these radiate out as the artist consciously co-creates. This energy matrix that's created is synergistic. The whole is greater than the parts. This is what quantum, working in the quantum field is all about. So. I also, when I did these, I made certain postulates, meaning I, I made statements that I, I wanted to be true. I wanted to make them true. And anyone can do this in other areas. But I wanted these to be able to sing, to be able to heal, to be able to uh, bring some comfort to people. And such that a certain set of energy coordinates, perhaps like a musical group, would resonate with a certain person who saw this. And that person would bond with that. It's like having a, a new puppy in a way, but without all the hassles, and in a higher vibrational level. So this thing can sit there like a perhaps a radionics set or 
our consciousness elevator, our, our com consciousness amplifier, and it becomes much greater than the art piece because it's healing, it's, it's resonating, um, it's holding a certain energy field. So yeah, we talk is, about it as, as just it's vibrating something. Yes. Exactly. And that vibration can be extraordinarily loving and healing. And Absolutely. And the other thing that, that I wanted to put forth was that once you establish this kind of attitude and consciousness, which is simply a little bit of attitude adjustment, and open yourself and start working on the artwork, it wants to be manifested. It's like a baby that really wants to come out. And it will come through in very strange ways that sometimes uh, are humorous and unanticipated. And there are several approaches to this art that I suggest people use. I suggest they go in and create a kind of a playpen, they put some pieces together and start just fooling around and playing around and going over here and not using the mental powers so much, but the, the kind of childlike playing powers. And, and the other way I've started some of these pieces is to take piece one, a welded on, weld on piece two, and then I'll look where around. It's going, right. And right. oh, there's piece three, pick it up, and on it goes. And suddenly you realize, wow, oh, I need one of these round platforms, these, these bridge washers or something. And then, on certain cases, I've actually experienced seeing a finished piece and then trying to work toward that. So this may right, come no. this may come in many ways to an artist, but and it's very, very exciting. And sometimes you actually work on a piece and you get really tired of it and kind of uh, you want to walk away from it, you want to put it in the corner, and then you look at it two or three months later and and if this is working right, you come up to it and you say, Wow, did I do that? And then you the other characteristic of this future science art is that very often you'll do one piece and you'll do another piece and it will have no relation to the to the first one seeming relation it m well, most it's part of the infinite so it's well, they're all well, connected and related if you study art history you'll see that that any most painters had a style they had they maybe if they were really long lived they may have had three periods of different styles in their lifetime or two and sometimes it just goes linearly when you work in the quantum field, right. you can create something. There's no that, telling. There's no telling what's going to happen, and that's the exciting part that's of it. Beautiful yes. Part. And, and also, you're working, we were talking earlier, on a new book about the year 3000, which is a little bit away from us. And, and what is coming through you, and what are you manifesting about like the coming times, about the new paradigms, about how all the change is happening, and what you're you know, futuristically seeing and feeling and all? Wow, well, I'm getting the chills when you're asking me that one. This is a brand new master paradigm. Uh, I haven't really presented in public other than to one small isolated group on our peace cruise that we had uh, two years ago, but uh, this is a master paradigm for shifting the whole consciousness of the human race uh, into the third millennium, the year 3000. And it consists of about 24, 25 sub-paradigms, or I, you can call them keys to ascension if you want to. And each one of these involves the use of the intuitive senses. Uh, there's future science art, future science medicine. Uh, there's what we call paraphysical fitness, which means exercising when you when you go to the gym or you do yoga or qigong or tai chi you become consciously aware of exercising the finer bodies it's not exactly rocket science but it's never been talked about before it's opening pushing the envelope and having this little bits of these little bits of information turn switches and they elevate the consciousness like as you said before uh, in a previous interview, you don't have to have your begging bowl and go meditate in a cave for 30 years. You can have 
the equivalent of enlightenment as a techno shaman in a flash, in an instant. And it can come to you um, individually if you're working on art. It can come to someone who's attending uh, or listening to this program. Just that would like be the that. plan. And that would be the plan. <laughs> and it would be wonderful to hear from someone uh, in the audience who, who went, wow, you know, uh, that pushed that button right on. And I just, it's, uh, it's a funny thing because enlightenment isn't what it's all cracked up to be. And, and something funny happens when, when you do get uh, that transformation. First of all, the transformation happens often in a way you never expect it. It may be very humorous or embarrassing. And once you have that happen, then you have to deal with what you, with the gift you've created that's happened to you. And now I've got about close to 100 sculptures sitting there because I got so busy manifesting these things that uh, and when I first did it, because they were essentially brought from the future or somewhere else, people didn't relate to them. They walked by them and they didn't even notice them. And I went, wow, how is that possible? You know, I thought these were, these were, you know, they came out complete, you know, for what they were. And, but it took about 10 or 15 years before people started going, whoa, that's, uh, that's really something. And I'm listening to these people because the, the greatest confirmation of something that an artist creates comes from a person who has no uh, vested interest. They just walk by it and they look at it and they say, oh, that's beautiful. That's lovely. Or... It does something to them. You know, they bond with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, when this book about the year 2000, about these, what, what do you, what's the word you use? Super paradigm? I call, I call future science technology a master paradigm. Master That's paradigm. a beautiful term for them. They are all super paradigms. I'll give you another, uh, another example. Um, of future science medicine. This involves, uh, we actually have intuitive medical people now. Uh, they're called medical intuitives. So if you can envision an operating theater uh, with the usual high tech, you know, heart surgery, whatever it is, and then sitting over here quietly on the side is a group of psychic healers. Now, they're helping create the field to make sure that the patient is stabilized, the, the medical team is working as they should, and it's been proven that after the surgery, the post-operative, when the patient is coming out of surgery, that the time under anesthesia, and recovery time, is something like cut in half. Another aspect of future science healing has been brought from Russia with brand new technology. There's a device called the Cosmos Sinar, which is a handheld device about as big as um, that. Mm -hmm. It's a little, got a little battery in it. it uh, I think a Russian eye surgeon, a lady, brought it over from Russia. It has little metal prongs on one end of it and you turn it on, you put it on the patient's um, arm so that the prongs contact the skin. Now the device reads the vibrational balance, if you will, of the patient. It senses any disease conditions. And then it puts out what could best be called cancellation waves for those... Harmoni har harmonizing waves. Just like a muffler in a car or mm -hmm. noise cancellation headphones. So it puts out energy, little sets of vibrations to correct those conditions and balance the person's health. Now what's really amazing... Have you that, tried this? I mean... No, I haven't, but I have, I have a very famous scientist friend that... Uh, uh, has been using it on his wife who is ill. And you think that there's real uh, technology behind it, and real? 
Oh, ability. absolutely. Oh, fantastic. Absolutely. That's great. great. And the amazing thing about this device is that it works into the future. It not only corrects the present condition, it senses the conditions that are going to occur based on the, on the present state of this living entity, the, the patient. And then it goes and produces waves to head off those, those uh, conditions that might come. Now that is really wellness squared, wellness to the X power. So those are a couple of examples and, of what super you, paradigms. Right, and how, how do you fit all this in with like that internal knowing, that internal harmonizing? You know, that if we could come into that experience of what people call enlightenment, ascension, and, and the, uh, like say the Indians have an expression, if there's no place for death to enter, it won't. So if there's no place for illness to enter, if there's no place for bad energy to enter, so how do we as a species come into contact with that root, the, the pure root of what it is to be a human being, the fulfillment of, you know, the enlightenment, ascension, you know, coming into a knowing of what we really are, which is that, you know, infinite energy? Well, <laughs> it takes a lot of hard work, and um, the strange part of it is that when you get to the point where you start to really get it, you kind of forget how hard it was to get there. And then you get really, you have to get really busy dealing with what is, has occurred or starts to occur when you, when you get it together, you know. There, I don't think there's an easy way for the pioneers from the future, but, but I do believe that each time one person gets to a certain place, such as with the future science art or a certain healing modality, it triggers a kind of an evolutionary, um, starts a critical mass, a movement going, a shift. And, and you, usually people don't talk about an illumination or enlightenment like this, but really, it's just going up the evolutionary ladder. Yeah, raising the quantum field right, exactly. towards the hundredth yeah. monkey. And as you do, and we're the, at the hundred and twentieth. Can you imagine <laughs> how on fire we are? <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and and the more the more people can see manifestations of this or experience, even for a few moments, this energy, it's addicting because it's. It's like, it's what, where humans should be. Humans... Uh, it feels better. Yes, yes. And, and one author said, we're not human beings, we're humans becoming. And so we're becoming uh, more enlightened, we're becoming more knowledgeable, and no matter what you're doing, uh, you become, you get into that zone and you start to be happy there. Well, that's sometimes a very long and arduous journey. But the uh, payoff is worth it. So in 30 seconds, what would you like you know, everybody to, to feel, to know, to vibrate about the gifts you've been given over your, you know, beautiful life? <sighs> well, 20 seconds. You have seconds. to... You no. have to. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say you have to go through a lot of excrement to smell the roses. But when you get there, you forget about all you've been through. And all of us have been through this stuff. So we just need to stick together and uh, we, we need to try to eliminate the negative things in our life and stick with positive people, stick with positive ideas. Uh, Try to find a common grounds for our uh, dreams and visions and happy moments okay. and Any resonate. Okay. Any information about Elliot, his books, his incredible art, his visions, Alan, 805-687-205 through. Good night. We love you. God bless you. Thanks for coming. <laughs>